What's up guys, Matt here. As you can see, I've got a 2014 Audi A6 here in for some rotors and pads. Doing them front and rear. We're gonna start with the rear because they're just a little bit more involved. And as you probably know, doing the rear service on this vehicle requires a scan tool. And that is because this is equipped with an electronic parking brake. So we'll need to use the scan tool to fully disengage and retract the electronic parking brake and then we can go and remove the pads, remove the rotor, swap everything over, and get this car a fresh set of brakes. If you've been around this channel for a while, you'll know that I've already done numerous brake jobs on various Audis and Volkswagens in previous videos. And for the most part, they're all pretty much the same procedure. I'll link those videos in the description below, so go check those out. The main difference with newer vehicles like this A6 is the addition of an electronic parking brake. I went over the procedure to disengage and retract that electronic parking brake in the previous video. No VAGCOM required, just an OBD11 tool and a phone app. I'll link that video in the top right hand corner of the screen right now. If you haven't seen that, I would suggest watching that video before this one. With the parking brake retracted in the service mode, we can follow our standard brake procedure. We will want to go under the hood and open up the brake fluid reservoir. On this vehicle, it's located under the rain shield. You can access the cap without removing the whole rain cover. However, I wanted to get paper towel around the whole opening and catch any brake fluid overflow. So I removed the weather strip, then removed the entire cover. So now that we have the electronic parking brake disengaged, we're going to want to remove the slide bolts. One right here, one down here. Once the slide bolts are out and this is disconnected, we should be able to stick a screwdriver in here, compress the piston just enough so that we can pull this caliper off. Then we'll take the rotor off, put the new rotor back on, put the new pads in, put the new hardware in on this carrier, and we'll be good to go. To remove the slide bolts, you'll need a 13 millimeter and a 15 millimeter wrench. The 15 millimeter will hold the lock nut and the 13 millimeter will spin the slide bolt. The 15 millimeter nut is very shallow, however, so you'll need a skinny 15 millimeter, or in my case, I used a needle nose vice grips. These bolts can be tricky to break loose, which I have demonstrated in the past. But with patience and a little help from a rubber mallet, you should be able to crack those loose, then remove the bolts. With those bolts out, the caliper is free to be removed. However, it will most likely still be slightly clamped onto the pads in the rotor. To relieve this pressure, you can get a screwdriver or anything flat to pry behind the pad. This will compress the caliper piston slightly to provide the clearance needed to remove the caliper. At this point, rocking and pulling on the caliper should be sufficient to pull it off the pads and out of the caliper carrier. 
We'll want to be careful not to let the caliper hang on the brake lines, and for this vehicle we can just rest it up here on the suspension. Now we'll want to remove the pads and the rotor. The pads are simply resting within the inserts in the caliper carrier. These will slide out by hand or with the help of a flathead screwdriver. Where the pads were seated in the caliper carrier, there's a little metal insert that we'll want to replace, so we can pull the old ones out. The rotor is held onto the hub with a T30 screw. These have a tendency of stripping out, which is not good, so we'll want to hit that screw with some penetrating spray before we attempt to remove it. While we're waiting for the PB Blaster to work its magic, we can go ahead and compress the caliper piston. On most VW and Audi vehicles that I've worked on, the rear brakes require a caliper tool that can both spin and compress the piston at the same time. However, this piston does not need to be spun while compressing, so any old C-clamp or compressor tool will work to push this piston all the way into the caliper. Now, let's try to remove that rotor set screw. And with that screw removed, we can pull the rotor off the hub and slide it underneath the carrier. I was surprised that I wasn't required to remove the caliper carrier to remove the rotor, which I've needed to do for all other Volkswagens and Audis I've done in the past, but there's enough clearance that it's not necessary for this A6. At this point, I like to clean up the hub with a wire brush to remove any oxidation that is formed behind the rotor, and I also like to clean up the caliper carrier. These inserts that we've removed and now are reinstalling, they're the surface on which the pads will slide. So we'll want to make sure that they're well lubricated with brake grease. And at this point, you could also pull the caliper slide pins to grease them up. However, I checked these on the other side and they looked fine. This car is not very old, it doesn't have a lot of miles on it, so I skipped this step. But if you're interested, I've linked a video of someone showing this procedure and that's linked in the description below. Now we can get the new rotor and slide it up under the caliper carrier and lock it into place with the new set screw. All the parts that I've used in this video were purchased from ECS Tuning. I'll leave a link to everything I used in the description below. The owner of this vehicle decided to pick the brake parts individually. However, if you'd rather have all the parts in one easy service kit, ECS Tuning offers pre-assembled kits which provide all the parts needed to complete your brake job. I'll link that below as well. At this point, we can grab the new pads and grease the back sides of the pad, making sure to avoid getting any grease on the friction surfaces. We're going to push the inner and outer pads up to the rotor so that we can now slide the caliper over the top.
I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge a mistake that I made during this step on the other side. The driver's side rear inner brake pad has a center wire running into it. This gets pushed into the inner pad and it sits at a specified distance below the friction surface. When the friction material gets thin enough to reach that sensor, you'll get a service reminder to replace the pads. This is where I made the mistake. Although the pads look identical, there is an inside and an outside pad. The inside pads have a notch to accept that sensor. I accidentally installed two outside pads on the driver's side, so I couldn't get that plug into the pad, which meant I had to remove the caliper and swap out the inside pad. No big deal, but I figured that could be a common mistake, so I just wanted to let you guys know. All right, back to the passenger side. With the inside and outside pad in the caliper carrier and pushed up against the rotor, we can take the caliper and slide it over the pads, aligning the slide bolt holes with the caliper carrier bolt holes. We can reinstall the caliper slide bolts, torquing them to spec. I'll have torque specs in the description below. We'll plug in the ABS sensor and the rear brakes are complete. I'll be going over my procedure for the front brakes in the following video, but in the meantime, if you have any questions, I can try to help you out in the comment section below. Huge thanks to ECS Tuning for helping out with these parts. And as I said, all the parts are in the description below. And if you use those links to buy anything from ECS, I do get a small kickback that really helps keep this channel going. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.